The MCU's been a bit of a disaster lately, and by lately I mean everything since Endgame pretty much. But Ant-Man 3 is here to save the day with a second brand new trailer out a couple days ago. That's right, I react to things two or three days later because I'm not a person that jumps on trends, damn it. I give honest feedback without the need to rush to market right away. So here are my thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantumania. How exciting. First thing I want to point out about this trailer is it starts with a cityscape. 90% of movie trailers start with cityscapes. That's just what you do, I guess. If you're an editor in Hollywood cutting up trailers, the first thing you do is you go through the entire two hour film and look for shots of the city. And then you say, that's it. That's the opening scene for the trailer. Still not making me any wetter in my swimsuit area. Here's the deal. These movies all look like entire green screen productions. They should be able to give me something a little bit more realistic. I understand they're going into the quantum realm. It's all fairy dust and pixie sticks, but at least make some of them out of practical things that I know the actor can interact with. Instead, I'm looking at Michelle Pfeiffer and friends on a hoverboard going down the side of a mountain. Nothing looks remotely real. There's a clip in this trailer by the new actress playing Cassie. I believe she's the third actress to do this role. That is so cringy, so poorly acted. It feels like I'm watching Gal Gadot say, Cal Al, no, all over again. This shot. This is what we're putting in the preview. This is what we're putting on the trailer front and center. This movie's gonna be bad. After aggressively watching this trailer several times, I can give you some real expert insight right now. Scott Lang is in this. Ant-Man, he's reprising his role for the third time. Uh, he's gonna befriend a new character named Kong the Conqueror. He's the villain in Creed 3, so Scott's an idiot for trusting this guy. He went after Adonis, for crying out loud. Anyway, he's gonna betray Scott, I'm guessing. Scott's gonna make a foolish choice, kinda like Spider-Man did in No Way Home. Kinda like how Wanda became evil in Doctor Strange 2. Kinda like how the Avengers basically are responsible for every disaster and chaotic event that's taken place in the last decade of cinema. Why are we still making movies like this? It's really not that interesting when the supposed hero keeps making boneheaded decisions that lead to cataclysmic events. No, I'm not a Marvel hater. I know it sounds like I am. I'm a movie lover. I'm a movie critic. And what I'm seeing on display right now isn't really doing much for me. At one point, there's a large penis tower of men, of Ant-Man. That, that kind of tickled my fancy, but not enough to rush out. Not enough to say, hey, let's get the family together and go see this film. I'll probably be alone by myself in the middle of the night watching this in a dank theater, contemplating all the choices I've made this far. Modok is in this. M-O-D-O-K, I think that's how you pronounce it. Looks like shit. There's been a still shot going around the internets uh, of what he looks like mask off. And <laughs> yeah, just take a look. Yeah, it's the taste you can see. I watched this on the Marvel YouTube channel and looked into the comments to see what people had to say and they're all loving this shit. Every one of them's like, this is it, Marvel's back, the MCU's back, this is the film that's like Endgame 2.0. They must have taken down that trailer and replaced it somehow because when I watched it, I had none of those thoughts. It legitimately looks like a bunch of CGI thrown up on the screen. I had no emotion at all outside of one cool line at the end of this two minute plus trailer, which is this. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. Scott looks pretty banged up too. This is the third Ant-Man movie. He's been in five or six or seven or eight. I don't know at this point how many of these MCU movies he's crossed over into. So there is a good chance they might actually kill him off. That's stakes, I guess, to some people. That's not enough for me. It is nice though to go in with a little bit of knowledge that something could go different, something could go wrong, and it won't just be your by the numbers film. It's probably gonna be by the numbers. These are my negative thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Let me know what yours are in the comments below. Are you pumped? Is this the one that's bringing you back to the MCU? Or are you kind of like me and it's, it's kind of all over. I've lost interest. You gotta do better. You gotta do different. All these movies look like ass now. Except for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. That legitimately looks great, but that's because 
the track record's been great from the director, James Gunn. So we'll end on a positive note. Really looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Ant-Man 3, not so much. The previous Ant-Man films were very small scale, pun intended, I guess. Uh, but this one looks to be larger than life. He does have the ability to go big. Uh, he's going big and I'm going home. That's the bottom line. Let me know again your comments. Like the video if you had a good time. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie related videos each and every week. Would love to hear from you. See you soon. Thanks again for watching the video. If you like what I'm doing, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies where you can become a member for just $1. If you want to go above and beyond, there's even a $30 tier where you can make me watch a movie, review it, and give you a nod. Give you a shout out in the video. It's, it's pretty cool. We're having a lot of fun with that. I'm also on Discord at Adam Does Movies. I'm on TikTok. I'm on all the social media platforms you could possibly imagine. So check out the link tree in the video description if you dare. It's not really a scary thing. All right, bye.